we're getting into the holiday spirit here, and our students, Rising Web Scholars, are still putting a few ornaments on the tree. Greetings to all of you. I am Sherry Hu, and I'd love to have you meet these wonderful and inspiring students. Every year, about 100 first-generation college-bound students are picked to become SRA Scholars. The competition is fierce, as nearly 800 students from around the Bay Area typically apply. Those picked are from low-income families and have overcome tremendous obstacles like homelessness, abuse, neglect, and poverty. One of the biggest obstacles for me uh, growing up was not having a father around. My biggest life obstacle, I would say, um, was my upbringing. For me, my family has always been a part of the cycle of poverty. Yes, I did have a challenging childhood. I faced uh, alcohol abuse within my family, and as well as housing issues. I think my big life obstacle is probably stability at home and overcoming it. My home circumstances, my the addiction that runs in my family. The year after I left his side, he was murdered due to that violence I escaped. Sadly, in my life, I didn't have a father figure, so. When you listen to Alexis Webster's story, you'll begin to understand that these students live with real life horror. And despite what they encounter, they truly do rise above. So once you guys have your folder downloaded. So this is how the project is going to look like. Sometimes looks are deceiving. Okay, we got it. For Alexis Webster, a GPA above 4.0 is the norm. She's been an honor roll student throughout high school. Take, take a look at the screenshot. She aims high because she wants to go to college and make up for her past. As a 17-year-old junior with a 4.1 GPA, many wouldn't expect me to have such a rough life. I grew up on the streets with a very abusive drug addict for a mother, along with an older brother who molested me countless times, plus constant sickness. My life wasn't a life, it was worsened. The family lived on the streets, in a dugout, a car, a motel. She recalls times when she and her sister were left alone in the room for Just days like, with no food. Just surviving in the household with two monsters, with monsters as a family, surviving in an environment like that, and then being able to come out of it, I knew I had to make the best of what happened to me. <laughs> Intervention arrived when Alexis was 14. Police arrested her mother, and Alexis and her sister were placed in a foster home with a woman she now lovingly calls Mima. Mima is my mom. I'm telling her, now you don't allow your past to dictate your future. Uh, you, uh, what has happened to you, yes, it, had, it has happened. But right now, you focus on yourself. Alexis was a broken child. But as she healed, she listened and focused. Okay, now. She's made tremendous academic strides considering she missed school when she was homeless. Because it was really hard in eighth grade after not going to school for three years. I got to a place where I was able to become motivated enough to keep going and to push for higher than a 4.0 and to push to get into like a really great college or university. Though Alexis has many more steps to take, at this point in time, she can look you in the eye and honestly say, life is great. <laughs> it's so good to, to me right now that it's unbelievable to say that I went through all of that. I see success, I see happiness, <laughs> and I see peace. We have other class of 2017 SRA scholars here tonight. There is Minnie, Miguel, Amber, and Centurion. And they are so excited because this is the year they're waiting for their college acceptance letters. Jessica. Students Rising Above started as a scholarship program, but it's grown into much more. SRA supports students throughout their college years and even after graduation. <laughs> they get mentors, internships, job training, health care, and of course, financial aid. The SRA success rate speaks for itself. 90% of the young scholars graduate from college. You're my girls. So you can see how special it is for these students to join this unique program. Right now, they'd like to share with you some holiday wishes. If I had to summarize the holiday season in one word, it would be family. Sharing love with family and friends. 
quality time with the people that you love. Memories, faith, giving, and appreciation. I would describe the holiday season in one word as exciting. The holidays mean family. Hopeful. Happiness. If I had to describe the holiday season in one word, it would be giving. For us, the holiday season has definitely meant coming together and just cherishing all of the moments we've had um, in the whole year, um, not necessarily just up until Christmas. Happy holidays, everybody. <laughs> a big thanks to all of our students. They really are wonderful. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to introduce you to an SRA alum and why years after college graduation, she's still close to SRA. Back here at the SRA holiday party, we're almost finished with the decorations, and then it will be on to peace, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> the students here today are either in high school or college, but their ties to SRA don't have to end once they graduate. Many of them stay in touch, and some even return to their hometown to give back in meaningful ways, like Sophie Lau, SRA class of 2003. Wherever Sophie Lau goes in life, she takes with her hope. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to just be alive and, and to see the beauty that there, there, there is in this world and, and I don't want to live in a bubble and, and feel safe in my own comfort zone. As a social work intern at UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital, what are the primary concerns and needs of the family? Sophie's in a unique position. She supports many young people who, like her, come from broken families. I see my vulnerability and my weaknesses as strengths. For me to say and be present in the room and say, I I'm so sorry, I, I understand what you're going through. It must be really, really hard. Um, and to really mean that when I say it. I just um, use art to express how I felt, felt suffocated. and. Not free. Sophie truly understands. You only have to look at this self-portrait she showed us in 2003 to know. She says she lived with her strict father after her parents divorced, but it really wasn't living at all. He went off on me. He tied my hands and stuffed rags in my mouth so I couldn't scream or cry. And he was just on top of me. He was on using his um, fist to strike my head and I thought I was dying. It wasn't easy, but Sophie finally revealed her fears and pain to her school counselor. She was immediately placed in foster care. Her father was arrested. Having the inner strength to make that decision, it was really just a calling to protect myself. It was just, I, wanted, I want to live. I want to live so badly. Next spring will be a celebratory milestone in her life, when Sophie expects to graduate from Cal with her master's in social welfare. I think it says that she's a very special person who um, has a, a very good heart and a deep well of empathy. Yeah. Back in 2003, she said she wanted to someday help and be there for children whose lives were like hers. And to this day, her vision hasn't changed. I hope in 10 years that I will, you know, still be helping people and, and helping families. Sophie is still close to her mentors with SRA, and I've heard other alums say that SRA is like family. Okay. Lorna Contreras Townsend is a great role model. She's an alum, class of 2004, and now heads up student programs for SRA. SRA is like family because there is a support system that you find within SRA that you are not finding in other organizations. And I really do feel like there is a connection that is made between student and advisor, student and other SRA staff that's quite unique. The best part of SRA has been having like someone to keep you on track and go back and forth with you, check in with you, make sure you're doing all right. Well, the support they've given me throughout has like continued to be something I cherish and will forever cherish. They've been supporting me as if a parent would support their child. Having been an alum of the program, um, this is the job of my dreams. 
these students, because of their life circumstances growing up, have a lot in common. SRA is their bond, and as we quickly race to 2017, here's what the students look forward to in the new year. For me, the new year means a year of growth. The new year for me means moving closer to my dream job and moving closer to being self-sufficient to help my family. I'm excited to see what new adventures I'll have and the new people I'll meet. This new year means to me is a new future. Opportunities and challenges that I didn't really think were possible for myself before. <laughs> I will take some time to study abroad and create something even bigger for me in the future. Moving into this new year to me is just a new day. <laughs> Going to college, you start new and I'm excited for that. Graduate strong and um, pursue a career in the field that I like. You know, that was our goal and I'm really close to accomplishing it. Yeah, yeah. This new year is actually very exciting because I got my first full-time offer. So I'm officially starting at my company and all that good stuff. So making great moves and starting a new journey in life and a new career. Opening new doors, networking, um, work, and the real life isn't so far away, so. If you'd like to learn more about students rising above, go to our website, cbssf.com SRA. I'm Sherry Hu, and all of us here would like to wish all of you happy, happy holidays, holidays and, and a happy new, new year. year. Yay! <laughs> Hugs to all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all of you, your champ.